Hello and welcome to my video. Uh, my name is Eric Swenson and we're going to go over the Axure 9 Pro features. Uh, we'll also compare to Axure 8 Pro and see what some of those differences are. Uh, but today we're really going to focus on Axure 9 and some of the new features. Uh, if you are used to Axure 8, um, this is sort of the UI experience that you're used to. So here uh, you have the top toolbars at the top. Uh, you have your pages, your libraries, your masters, different properties, notes, and styles, and uh, your outlines, which are really your layers. Um, within Axure 9, it's slightly different. Um, you still have some of your uh, mouse selections, so uh, selection modes. You also have this insert, which is uh, slightly different, um, which is something that you don't necessarily have over here. Um, insert allows you to add a variety of different things such as rectangles, ovals, lines, some of the common elements um, which you get within your libraries. So that's a little bit easier. Um, you also have some of your formatting at the top here. Um, up in Axure 8, um, you have similar but not all of the same um, up to the left. So a lot of these are distribution, um, alignment, and in Axure 9, um, it does it breaks those out. Um, so next going down is your formatting toolbar. Uh, this is for if you have an object on here or if you have text. Um, these are things that you can format depending on um, what you have selected. Uh, the next one is Axure 8. Uh, your for formatting toolbar is also here, um, so it's very similar. Um, the biggest changes is really to the layout. Um, Axure 9 allows you to customize your layout. Normally you'll have your pages here, um, and then you can kind of switch to outline um, within the tab here. Normally the outline in 8 uh, is down on this lower right hand side, so if I add a box or add an image, uh, you can see these two layers. Um, within 9, it actually uh, by default puts it to the left, uh, to the right of the pages. But what 9 allows you to do is actually drag and drop these into different locations. So if you are still used to having outlines on the bottom right, you can certainly do that. Or you can move them around, you can have multiple tabs. Um, it's really up to you how you want to customize your uh, layout, but by default, they moved outlines next to pages because it kind of makes sense. You have your pages and then your layers within those pages. Um, the next one is the libraries and masters. They've also combined these two where you have libraries on the left and masters on the right. Um, you know, I think this is a good layout here because not that often you jump uh, to masters. So sort of having it in a tab style, I think uh, helps. Whereas in eight, um, you had to have this really small space to scroll up and down for all of your libraries. And then you would have to like move this down and readjust. And you, if you had a lot of pages, there was just a lot going on, on the left here. So they sort of minimize that. Uh, but again, if you wanted to move masters down, you could do that, get that same experience. Um, but for me, it, it works fine just there. Um, the real big, big difference here for nine is really around interactions. Uh, so if I wanted to make this box clickable to go to maybe a new page, um, what you would have to do in eight is I would click on it. I would say, you know, create new link or I could on click, uh, go to a new uh, page. So here it already has the interactions uh, sort of filled out for you and you can have more events on double click. Um, and it was kind of right there for you. What they did in nine is actually minimized it to this interaction button. So if I were to click on new interaction, I could do same thing. I can click to tap or, um, you know, and then I could go to open a new link and I can choose the page and then you hit OK. So what this does is it tries to minimize the height of all these things. And if you want an additional action, you would add this little button here 
Where in eight, it's slightly different, where if I wanted to say create a link to page two, that was pretty quick and simple. If I wanted to add a new one, um, I would have to just click on here and maybe do, um, you know, add a case, and then you'd go open link, page three. Um, so it, it's slightly different. It's not using this um, <clears throat> same paradigm. It's a little bit different adding in the next uh, action. And you would just click through, and there you go. So um, at first I couldn't really see it. I didn't know where that next interaction was. Here you can then either click this button or um, provide that. The other one is uh, really around the um, under interactions. You also have uh, whether it's a tooltip or um, a sort of in things that you can do and interact with. So here, if you look at the form field, a text input, this is where you may have uh, things around uh, hint text and that sort of thing. And it's all built into this ellipse um, marquee thing, um, where that's slightly different from eight. Eight allows you to easily see that information. So if you go down to properties and you can see the tool tips here, um, submit button, some of the different hint style text, um, that's all hidden within that ellipsis. Um, somewhat hard to find actually, um, but it's all here. Uh, you can kind of see that um, hint text, tool tip, max link. Um, so those, those are mostly the big differences there. Um, style, uh, what I would probably suggest is moving style slightly down. I'm not sure if you always use your style bar up here. In eight, um, you know, you, you'd be able to kind of switch between these two different things. And if you had text um, on the page, this is where I would bounce between style and properties quite often. Um, and this is where I would do my formatting. Um, certainly it's all up here, but this gives, feels you get a lot more um, on the right hand side. Um, whereas this one, if I were to choose this, you'll notice that this is takes up the full amount. And I think this is why still keeping these uh, here um, and keeping the outline to the left, I think um, is relevant. Uh, so that is mainly it around the different UI changes. Um, from a functionality standpoint, I think the basics of that are you know the same. So you were able to create dynamic panels, um, create dynamic panels from certain elements. It's pretty much all the same. And the last part that I'm gonna discuss is really around page dimensions. So in Axure 8, um, you have your base uh, properties of your page um, and the style. So you can have your background color, your alignment, whether you want it centered. But it really didn't, if you went to the page and you scroll that in and out, it sort of stuck to this top left. There really wasn't much you could see on the frame. So if you had a, a website that was uh, 1280 by um, you know any, any particular height, you'd have to sort of frame out what that um, that site would look like. So you'd kind of have to put your frames of a, a like a background rectangle and sort of say, okay, this is the uh, the size that this page is going to uh, conform to. Um, and then if it was slightly smaller, you can create adaptive views. Um, but it was very difficult to kind of know what the frame of that site would be um, as you're starting to build it out. So knowing when to put your grids in. So um, in Axure 9, what they did was they allowed you to uh, create that sort of, as you scroll up and down, you're now able to scroll outside of this zero by zero um, uh, section. So you can kind of zoom out and what it allows you to do is by default, it's just set to auto, but they have these uh, ways that you can customize the dimensions. So for a particular web, this one is uh, 1024. You can certainly change that to 1280. And as you're starting to design out your pages, 
you now have a frame of reference into how how big things need to be when and you can snap them to the sides um, and this allows you to really frame in your content. Uh, so you have the gray background here and you can start to really work with things in the top left a lot easier. Where in eight, you, you were confined to not being able to scroll left or right and be able to interact with things that were overlapping in the top left. So this made it a lot easier to sort of see that information, work with it. Um, and then as you start to build out um, things, you could also change the dimensions to some of the other things like uh, the different sizes, uh, like this one's an eight plus. So for a phone, uh, you'll also be able to see um, how these things look on the page. And so you can adapt them, um, adjust them, and um, you know overall just see the information on the page. So I think this is a great feature uh, to feature within uh, nine because it really helps uh, frame in the, the way that people look at the designs and accommodate for the, the space within the area. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video and I hope to be posting more like this soon.